Our next step is to take our design and bring it into the CAM or manufacturing environment. Going to hit the drop down and select manufacture. I will double check my units and I'm working in millimeters, but just make sure that it's the same as your model or same as how you'd like to machine your part. In this case, we're setting this design up for the laser cutter just to get an introduction to some of the CAM tools and processes. So we'll be using one simple tool, the cutting tool, and a simple setup. To get started, we're going to click Setup and add a new setup. This dialog box over here will guide us through the setup. The operation type that we're going to choose is cutting. The orientation, we can choose model orientation. In this case, it doesn't totally matter, but this will matter where we start our part and where we reference it. As far as the origin, we're going to choose model origin. And for the model, under models and keep going down to component and that should select my model. The next tab that we have is the stock tab and since we're cutting this out we don't really care what the material size is we're actually using something that's way larger than the part and we need to make sure it just fits within the laser cutter so in this case we'll keep it on relative size box and we'll have no additional stock. The post process here we can change our name of our program if we'd like and we can also adjust this later. I'm going to hit OK and now you can see that there's a setup. If we need to adjust anything in the setup we can right click and hit edit. Notice that my Z is up, my X and Y are oriented properly. That's very important for our setup. Again, my view cube, the Z, is up. So make sure that this matches the way you want it to be machined out. It'll make your life a lot easier. We're going to set up a cutting operation next. And it asks us for a tool. We don't have a tool in this project. So since we're laser cutting, we're going to go over to the cutting tools. And let's start with the general. And I'm using a universal laser cutter, VLS 3.6. And we can add more things. This is the most important for doing cutting operations. Select the operation you're doing, in our case, laser cutter. And the curve width for this particular laser falls somewhere between 0.1 and 0.5 millimeters depending on your material. Um, so what I'm going to do is put it at 0.25 right in the middle. The holder, this is really just for aesthetics in your case. Feed and speed, this is controlled by the machine. And as for the post processor, again this will be controlled by the machine so not necessary in this case. Let's hit OK and let's see. All of our details for this particular part are listed here. So if we need to adjust anything, we can right click and edit the tool. This looks good. Let's select our tool and hit OK. Our tool holder and tool appear. Notice that the tool is selected right here. Our cutting mode is auto. Feed rate doesn't matter since we're letting the software for the laser cutter control that. The geometry tab is next, and it's going to ask us to select a contour. I'm going to select the faces, and just make sure you select every part. All loops, and for the outside, the inside are always outside. Again, this doesn't totally matter. The curve will be determined based on our tool. I'm not going to add tabs, but you're welcome to do that. For the Heights tab, this generally gives us a good idea of our retract height, where the tool moves, the top of the material, bottom of the material, but again, our material is one thickness, so we're cutting a two-dimensional shape. For passes, 
we need to make sure that we're in compensation type in computer. We need the software for the laser cutter to do the compensation. We're not leaving any stock and we're not doing a smoothing pass. We're just cutting right through. The last tab linking, we need to get rid of the lead in entry and the lead out. We don't have to worry about the life of the tool and we don't need to ramp in and out of things. We're just going to turn the laser on, cut and move forward. The rest of these positions don't matter. If you'd like to start the laser in a certain point, you can select a point. Otherwise, it should start at the origin or the most sensible location. Let's hit OK. And we should be creating a profile right here. We can see that the percentage grows. All of our lines showed up. And we can see the yellow is the linking tab, so it's moving from part to part. Everything is outlined by blue, so that's going to be our cut. At this point, we've created a pretty good idea for what we're doing, and we can go forward and simulate our cut if we'd like. It'll show you the parts getting cut out. I think wall paint is easier to see, and for colorization, just hit material. And if you'd like to run your part, you can start the simulation and see it cut through. Again, it's a 2D operation, so it's sort of difficult to see the parts coming out. But we can get an idea for how long it's going to take, if the part's going to crash, or if something doesn't look right in the simulation, this helps us determine how our laser is going to move. And that should finalize our simulation. We can close that. Post-process. The laser cutter you need to make sure that you find the right post processor. Luckily, Autodesk HSM has a universal laser DXF exporter as a post processor. So we can go ahead and download that as a .cps file. And once you've downloaded that, just load that folder right here. On your post configuration, you should get a universal laser DXF uh, converter configuration right here. I'm going to export mine to the desktop and my export uh, extension is going to be .dxf. For normal CNC milling it might be a .nc file for our numerical control movement. I'm going to call this caliper. I'm going to uncheck open NC and editor and I'm going to post this file. It asks me where to save. I'm going to hit save. And then to check to make sure everything worked correctly, I'm going to open up a vector drawing program like Inkscape, Illustrator, Corel Draw, and I'm going to import, keep it the same scale and make sure everything worked. There's our calipers. It looks like it's exactly the right size. Make sure it fits, and I'm going to try to run this straight up and make sure everything works. Here we can see our calipers look about the right size, and they're able to be laser cut 